All right, all right, all right. This is David. And 6.30. And we're taking a quick look at the market first. Let's see what lurks. Um, all right. It's Thursday. We have initial jobless claims. Pre-market Philly manufacturing. So that's going to have an effect on the market pre-market. If you're trading pre-market, keep your eye on that. Um, and then uh, at 10 o'clock, existing home sales. We're going to be watching it. You might get a little choppiness going into that. And then after that, we got Hawkins and Jefferson and Cook and all the feds barking, 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 barking. And it's kind of lends to my theory that um, the federal government is trying to um, control the economy and the, F the Fed Reserve, which is a private central bank, is losing that control because more and more, um, you see these feds out there talking all the time, right? And um, it was kind of put to me that, um, you, you know, you speak softly when dealing um, with your enemies. You speak softly and carry a big stick, right? So if you don't have a big stick, then you start speaking loudly. And that's what I'm seeing the feds are doing. They're speaking loudly. Because their stick has diminished. And um, the federal government is kind of um, using incentives to um, divert investment in certain areas. So the, um, and, and they're doing that to control the economy because that's how they can control um, the elections, right? The reality is if um, everybody's making money and they feel good, they're going to vote, vote for the incumbent and stick with the party. So it's very um, self-serving, but doesn't work for the uh, economy. So really what I'm seeing is um, Biden giving incentives to certain industries um, and individuals. So um, the Student Loan um, Repayment Act. Now, I'm all about free education. And I think that's a good idea, but it should be going forward. What's done is done. You, you know, why do this round of people get forgiven? That's it. We've decided at this point of our country, in our country that we're going to um, um, make education free. Make it free. That's it going forward. Um, you, you know, higher, higher education. Um, and, that, you know, and everybody before, we, we bite the bullet. Um, but um, by making this um, incentive He's kind of diverting investment into consumer spending and buying um, buying uh, um, votes for the primaries and things like that. Um, and our country's done this before, through the late 50s into the uh, late 60s, and um, maybe even into the, well into the late 60s. And then the end result was uh, what transpired in the late 70s, which is high inflation. And um, a lot of really states um, going bankrupt, countries going bankrupt, um, really, really unmanageable cost of living. Um, stagnation was a, a result of it, which is um, um, high inflation, low um, employment, um, and um, just an overall pathetic um, growth in GDP. Uh, as a result, um, Reagan came in and introduced um, trickle-down economics or Reaganomics, and um, really started the free market dropping regulation and things like that. So that's what we really have to start looking at. Nobody's really talking about it. Um, a lot of people don't even see it, but this is what it looks like is happening um, here. Um, and, and um, you, you know, the Fed being so vocal is kind of showing me that they're, they don't have the controls in the economy that they think they do. And um, so, you know, you look into why do they feel that? Well, a lot of the things that big government is doing now is kind of counterintuitive um, with economics. So basically, we're having a shift. We're having a uh, economic uh, revolution where big government is trying to take it over. And unfortunately, they're going to use it to their benefit. Um, <clears throat> So it's interesting. So it's really kind of changing the manner in which I'm, I'm investing. Um, and it's going to look good for a little while. Everybody's going to think this is working out really well for a little while, and uh, maybe two or three years. And the end result will be um, 
whole lot of pain. And then we'll roll back to a, a free market system again. But now it's going to be engineered by politicians. Um, at least that's my opinion. Actually, my arrogance also says it's right. So remember, you hear, heard it here first. Um, and tell your friends. All right, so look, let's get into the chart, man. Um, obviously, here's our downtrend, right? We hit all of this, um, all, all this work I've done here, um, this mess, um, or maybe this art, we should say. So, um, and obviously, we get around these support and resistance um, areas, and the market changes its behavior. And now we're going into this wee bit of col con consolidation around here. Um, and what it looks like it's laying out. So here's today's bar. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, yesterday's bar, um, indecisive bar up and down. Today's bar kind of filled in all those voids, you know, and put some, some um, volume in this area. And what I'm thinking is um, that we continue this downtrend, and it looks like we may be building a head and shoulder, right? So we really don't want to see the market go past um, three, uh, 35, 85, right? And we're not going to trade now. Well, yeah, you know what? I mean, we, we may take some bearish trades today, um, because we, um, we have that bearish bias, bearish bias. Um, and day trading is a lot different from investing. And I'm looking at the long term when I'm ready to get in. So I'm going to watch this head and shoulders pattern, and I'm going to stop buying equities, um, right it around here for investment portfolio, not for swing trades or anything. But you can swing trade this pattern. There's just the entry will be a break of the shoulders. So this is as low as the, sh the break of the neckline. I'm sorry. This will be as low as we want to see the shoulder go within the spirit of this area. I mean, y you know, it's the market. It's not going to be as though um, <clears throat> an engineer had drawn this. So we're looking for the market to move back down over the next few days to around the 590, 600 range. Then return, and the swing trade entry will be a break of the neckline. And that's what this trend line is right here. And this is the overall trend that the market's been following, staying beneath. Um, and I'm going to be relatively bearish while we're beneath this line over the long term. But this is where I'd say um, I would take my chance on a swing trade. Um, regrettably, um, it's a big risk. You, you know, we're going to pop in here. Um, so we're looking at, uh, say, roughly 760. A stop would go below the slow of 500. You get 200 points in there. You know, that's, that's a pretty big risk. Um, you're talking about 10 grand, basically, right? If you did um, Delta 50s on an option trade. Um, but, I mean, you could find ways of mitigating your loss. We can talk about that. But, um, you, you know, if everybody's comfortable with that risk, you should really see an appreciation of about 200 points. So we're looking for about 39.40, which kind of puts us in a fairly decent range. And you know what? We're probably going to move up and hit the cloud right around here. And that cloud will... Um, will pose some resistance. That's what she's looking at to me. That's what I'm anticipating. So again, here's the weekly. And you can see this pretty consistent trading, right? And then we come into this area. These red lines are gaps that we needed to fill. And we just filled that gap right there. And... Um, this line right here was an anticipated low that I did some time ago um, based on the congestion, you know, way back here. And then, um, so this is one possible low, the first possible low. This is the second possible low. Um, unless there's a debacle, I don't see anything below this that would be um, attractive to the market. coffee baby <clears throat> and um, so anyway we hit this um, area 
and created this congestion. We did it before. We, this is actually a double test. And we, we blew through it a little bit. That low kind of attracted. Um, you could call these overshoots. We kind of stayed within the spirit of this and, and created um, consolidation. So we'll watch that. Um, so this, this broken green line is one possible low. Um, the high is, has remained um, 48.18, right? So this broken green line would be the center of the channel be between this possible low and the high. And it looks like it's kind of respecting that, right? So this, all these, this work was done um, probably back in November or so. Yeah. Yeah, probably back in November because we started to see the momentum fade off and everything. And I was like, okay, I need to get some targets in. So, um, and then the market is respecting that, right? And you could see even right here, um, it's respecting the center line. So it's leading me to believe that this is a very good bottom. Um, it's still going to have this action around consolidation, but um, it, it, it makes me aware of this bottom and the possibility that this could be the bottom. That's it. And I know it's very confusing because every time you turn on the news, um, you, the market's up and they say, oh, the bottom's in, the bottom's in, you, you know, and, and we're going up. And then we get a red day and you get all the news. Could the bottom begin, be in? And, you, you know, that's why I try to stay away from all this, um, op these opinion pieces and shit like that and different uh, um, all the, the, the analyst talk and the traders and a lot of people um, say to me, you, you know, are you familiar with this guy? Are you familiar with that guy? And I don't really track anybody who's doing work on the markets, although I'll read their books because they're not talking about the situation at hand. They're talking about their experiences in the industry. Um, so I'm familiar with a lot of um, the analysts, uh, but I don't follow them daily because I, I make money on my own work. I mean, you, you know, that's it. That would be like me, you know, painting Picassos. I mean, you, you know, the dude already did it. He made his money. I'm not going to uh, make any money like that. I need to make money on my own work. I have my own confidence. So um, I digress. Um, anyway, um, it's very interesting how this weekly um, chart is building up over here. So we'll see. We'll, we, we'll get that head and shoulders. And then we're back to the question, is this the bottom? Um, and we'll have to see if we break the, the head and shoulders, then I'm pretty confident that I'm, that this is the bottom. And there's a lot of opinion out there that this is the bottom, which may make it the bottom, right? This is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But regrettably, um, when we get there, the conversation is going to be, is 2,800 the bottom? Are we in for more pain? Um, and, and that could affect the market. Everybody's crying about shit, um, and that affects the market. Um, so, at, but at one point, where does the market take over and, and, um, and um, counteract all the crying? So we have to watch that. So anyway, that's why you use the, the scaling kind of philosophy. So right around here, I'm buying shit. Yeah, you know, right now I'm holding off because the daily chart is telling me otherwise. Um, you, you know, that like in the shorter term, I'm looking for this low here. So I'll chip away a little bit at this low because this head and shoulders could be the catalyst to move back up. This could be the turnaround. Or we could get a Christmas rally. Maybe come and visit this midline again, or maybe visit this um, proposed midline, which it's kind of, you know, demonstrating a little respect on this line too, right? Here's this proposed midline, and this is the solid line that is down around 3,300. This would be the midline to the solid line that's down around 3,300. And look, it's showing respect around this area. So that could be a very strong indication that we're going to head that way. And here, I kind of see a head and shoulders. So you got 900. And you got 300. So um, that move should have put us right about here. Yeah. 
and it did, and it closed up all this mess back here, and then we continued down to here. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's still not telling me. Um, we'll see how, how we behave. Um, this this move should put us right. If if this is genuinely a a flat a um, inverted head and shoulders, then that should put us right about here. It's really it's really not telling us too much. And we're coming into the Christmas rally, but what's interesting, okay, so past work, um, I, I created these um, blue broken lines, which is kind of the, the channel that the market was following prior to the government assistance due to um, COVID. So that's the first thing we're taking out right now. As far as uh, the Fed Reserve is concerned, they're taking that um, incentive out of the market um, or that support out of the market. And I'm thinking that we should return back. And you'll see, um, ironically, not ironically, I mean, basically, um, this is how this shit always lays out, that we're respecting this channel. There's always overshoot, but we're in within the spirit of this channel. And that's what it looks like is happening. And we're working... Um, right now in the lower portion of this channel, these um, broken, thin blue trend lines. Um, so what else is interesting is that if this triggers this head and shoulders, my general target is about here on the cloud, but we're really not too far, right? So um, a little political um, influence, um, Christmas rally, positive uh, psyche because we're seeing the Christmas rally, we may come and test the top of this channel again. That might be the high of this um, bear market bounce. But the other interesting factor is, I know I haven't gone far, but hey, you, you know, this is work on s and It's a good way to look at the market. Where the heck? There it goes. The other interesting thing is um, well, you know what, here we had this bear market bounce. It actually broke this bear market trend. So now this is, you really have to consider this a consolidation, right? We're not in expansion until we continue further down past this low. So the trend has really stopped. Seeing a little consolidation, get that bear market bounce. We said up here could be our target. Very interesting that we have these challenges right here behind us on the weekly. Um, and look, that puts us around Christmas right here, where where all of this um, converge. That puts us right around Christmas, twelve twenty three. I think that's how this is going to lay out. You gotta love making lines. Um, so we get here, and we're in consolidation, man. And actually trading in this trend line will keep us in consolidation. And in the summer, we'll break this high, and that will be expansion. And, and yet, we'll still be within the, this, this very healthy trend line. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm blowing up the market secrets right here, baby. Blowing it up. So, if you had to pay for this advice, bro, you'd be paying millions. Um, so anyway, that's what we're looking at on the daily. Um, we're gonna watch today. What are we? What are we looking at? We're up nine. Um, so we're we're in the middle of this bar. We're gonna have an inside bar. I'm expecting a push down. I think we're gonna make a move and 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 peel out this head and shoulders. So keep an eye on that. We'll go into the market today with a um, bearish bias on the S&P. Um, and let's just take a quick look at the ES. What's that telling us? Doing a lot of work on the S&P. But you, you know what? That's what we primarily trade. It's, it's demonstrating um, the head and shoulders pattern also. So do not be surprised.
if we see a little pullback today over the next few days we get down here we make it within the spirit of this area we make a nice um, shoulder again and then psh, that's the neckline this is the general pattern that we're following that's the neckline right there we break that neckline and we're on the move and it's potty time so um yeah keep an eye on that um and qbtc btc in that infamous channel on the daily um 240 showing a little bit of action you might be able to play with um, a few breaks on the 240. We're building a channel right here, right now. Um, I would just go to the top of the channel, top of the channel, and play the breaks. I mean, channels on BTC seem to be pretty good when it breaks. Look, here's a channel, here's a channel, right? High, low, it breaks it, psh, gives you a little something. And then it takes it back. So you got to be quick with your stops and everything like that. But, um, yeah, that's how I would play BTC. Just play the channels and uh, take the breaks and you, you could do it on any time frame you know shorten up that time frame and you could take little breaks here and there but um, the longer the time frame obviously the bigger the move so I'm just neutral on BTC right now just hanging neutral um, um, Earl um, yo you know what we're consolidating right around here um, the Saudis didn't do anything to um, help out Putin but they really didn't do much to hurt anybody. And um, so I'm kind of neutral on this. I know that uh, we're releasing um, some reserves. Big dummy. Um, but I think the Saudis are going to counter that. Really, I mean, the reserves should have been done a long time ago. This is too little, too late. Now he has to start cutting deals with the oil companies, give them incentives to start um, investing in the industry, drilling, tapping, and expanding. Um, so now's the time, baby. Now's the time. But um, again, they're trying to control the economy, deviate investment towards um, um, clean energy, which I'm in agreement. You know, I, I love the concept, but you know, you, you have to be strategic and intelligent. You, you know what I'm saying? We're not living in the fantasy world. This is a reality, and you have to deal with in reality and massage um, the, the country just like a company in the right direction. But they're politicians. I mean, they prosper by bullshit. Um, R&B, some gas, gasoline. Gas is grinding up, baby. Um, yo, and I'll tell you what. I was in New York. Um, what day didn't I stream? I think that was Tuesday. Yeah, I got on. Today's Thursday. I got on the, the, the mic late yesterday. So Tuesday, um, I was in New York. Yo, super, 419. Come back to Pennsylvania, super five dollars. I mean, what the fuck, you know? And then um, regular was down around three fifty or so. Over here, it's like three seventy. They beat you up in the mountains these days, and that's because all the fucking New Yorkers moved up to the mountains. The place has entirely changed. I gotta go. That's all right. Yo, you're gonna see a lot of bitterness, a lot of bitching, as the the temperature drops. Ugly Dave. Um, looking at Nat Gas, Nat Gas is just grinding its way down. Happy to see it. Um, long term, I got a target right down here around 540s. So, you know what? If you could hold out, look for that 540 price, and that's where, uh, that's, well, you know what? That's more of a shorter term target. Yeah, maybe $5. Let's see if we break this down here. Actually, I want to put put something right there to watch. I think. Let's see. Let's see if we could break that. If we could break this 519 area, that's actually kind of. Let's go right to the low. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See if we can break that 535. I think we might do that today, man. Um, you, you know, looking at the daily, you got this flag building. Maybe tomorrow is the move um, where we come down. But I don't think we are going to get much lower than $5 on this. No. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to say about five, 430, 450. Hmm. So bearish on that gas. 
And Bonds, yo, just bearish on Bonds. Um, got a little bounce, looks like, this morning. But, um, yeah, overall, I'm bearish on it. I mean, it, it it's really due for um, a good bounce. So, But we're waiting for some vigilantes to step in. What's happening now is people who have invested in bonds are just taking a fucking beating. And you, we've never seen this, or we haven't seen this in years, where bonds have been so aggressive to the downside. But um, that should give it a good bounce. I wanted to pick up more TBT, and I held out, and I held out too long, and I missed such a beautiful move. I mean, I had a piece of it, and I made some money, but I didn't get the size that I was looking for. But hey, there's always another trade right around the corner. Look at gold making a double bottom. You could see the divergence on this. Um, I'd watch that bottom and look for some indications of a reversal. Technically, um, on this divergence, it doesn't happen until it breaks this trend line. That's when it triggers the divergence. Um, so that's the, the conservative and, and, and um, technical entry. Um, but this is a good indication that something might be happening, and you could look for a reversal bar or something to try to get in low and um, see if you could ride the break of this and, and get behind. I mean, that's a nice piece of change right there. You know, you're talking about 100 points. So if you can find something aggressive, keep it tight, aggressive, keep a tight stop, and that would be a good entry for me. And that's it. That's all we're looking at. I'm not going to go through the other um, markets because we took some time and we got some meat on this um, meeting. Uh, so, hey, subscribe, hit your bell, hit the like, and join me at 9 a.m. where I get to um, celebrate myself a little more. All right? So I'll catch you then. Good luck trading.